Hi, um, this is Lisa Unger, and I am here chatting with my pal, Heather Goodenkoff. Uh, she's an extremely talented writer, and I'm sure most of you have heard of her. And this, and I just, I was lucky enough to get an early book um, of her upcoming May 12th release, This Is How I Lied. Um, you guys, this is extremely twisty, dark, compelling. I guarantee you pick it up and you will not be able to put it down. Um, so hi, Heather. Sure. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Lisa. So neither one of us have ever done this before and like that's okay. So we're just kind of <laughs> feeling our way through this and you know, we'd totally take feedback too on Heather's Facebook page, my Facebook page, ask questions, send us your like, you know, heart and smiley face emojis so that you know we know that you're listening and definitely ask questions because i'm sure we'll both check back to our facebook pages and ask and answer whatever questions That's so nice. i'm just gonna um just quickly um just talk about your book for a minute so it's yeah. really uh, you mentioned her in your in one of our author talks chats i think you mentioned nola yes who i of course i love <laughs> <laughs> So listen, I, without giving too much away, I mean, because it's very, very hard to talk about this book without giving, you know, um, important things away, but I really was intrigued by that character and I just wondered what was the inspiration and, you know, how do you feel about Nola? Yeah, so Nola is absolutely a very complicated character. She is the little sister of one of the main characters in the book and she um, is just very different, I must say. She, she's a vet, veterinarian as she grows up, and she just doesn't know how to relate to people. She's very um, self-centered. She has a little bit of a mean streak, to put it. Um, <laughs> put it mildly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, we just don't really know what her motivations are throughout the entire book. And I, I think, you know, her motivate, the motivation for Nola was probably, um, you know, I, I have two very lovely sisters, so they are not the motivation. Okay, <laughs> okay sure. <laughs> no, not at all. But, you know, I think we all, you know, have had our moments with, um, you know, when being little sister or big sister and yeah. having that person um, kind of terrorize you a little bit. Right. And Nola does that all the time in the right. book. Yeah. So she, she just um, really gets you thinking about, what family means, yeah. uh, what it means to be a good person, uh, and, you know, can damage people, do the right thing. Right. And, yeah. And that kind of thing. So I don't know. She, she was a lot of fun to write. Yeah. Uh, it's very late, very layered, very complicated. Also that, that relationship too, that like sibling, that twist mm -hmm. of the sibling relationship. Like there's, you know, there's like love and envy and, you know, anger and adoration and, you know, you really captured that um, yeah. very well. And, and I did dedicate the book to my two sisters. Because <laughs> I, really love I saw them. that, like, I love you. This is not you. Yeah, not reflective <laughs> of our, our relationship at all. Yeah. <laughs> you always do have to tell your family that, right? My mom is always like, why are all your moms like evil or dead? I was like, I'm sure that's not true. Yeah. Or do you nothing, get the question? Nothing personal. <laughs> Question, what kind of childhood did you have? Right. And I that a lot. I'm like, I had a perfectly happy You had a beautiful, I, I always enjoy seeing your pictures of your parents yeah. on your Instagram. They seem like such lovely people, so sweet. They are, they are very sweet. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I had, was just actually yesterday talking to Karen Slaughter um, about another book uh, called My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyen Khan um, Braithwaite. Did you have a chance? Have you have a chance to read that? I haven't read that, that but that has been on my list. It looks Yeah, you, I think you would really enjoy it because she really does dive very deep into that, into that sister relationship. And, you know, I, there, it's, it's a very complicated relationship between these two sisters in this book, obviously. One of them is, in fact, a, a serial killer, and the other is, you know, sort of compelled by, you know, this very kind of deep love she has for her sister to help her clean up these messes, like one after another. So, um, that's a that's a book that I recently read that I absolutely loved. Um, so we're going to lead into um, the questions that I wanted to ask you today. Though I'm going to call this series my three good things series. 
because I think we all need to focus on good things right now. Um, Heather and I were just talking about um, before um, before I started before I hit record. We were just talking about how um, you know we just don't you know this is a difficult time, and if you're feeling like a lot of pressure to be super productive or to do something that you've never done before. You have a whole list of things that you thought you were gonna get done because all of a sudden you're not commuting or whatever and you're not getting those things done. We don't want you to feel bad, you know, just it's okay. You know, anything that you can do is to help you, to help yourself feel better if that's being creative or if that's just losing yourself in a good book. We think that's what you should do. Do you agree, Heather? I totally agree. Excellent. So uh -huh. tell me, so your three good things we're going to talk about. One favorite book, it doesn't have to be anything current. It could be something just from your childhood that you love or even your kids' childhoods. Um, one favorite television show or movie and one comfort recipe, something that you cook when you, when you or your family needs a little comfort. So let's start with um, the, book. the book. What's your favorite? So I chose... Um... The Pull of the Moon by Elizabeth Berg, uh -huh. and Elizabeth Berg's writing is completely different than um, than what I write, and she's really absolutely one of my favorite authors. And I chose this book because um, I think we could all relate to it a little bit right right now. It's about a woman, Nan, who uh, one day, and it, it was a long time coming, but she is turning fifty, and. Uh, her daughter's going off to college and she wakes up one morning and decides that she needs to, to just take a little break and get away from it all. And so the whole story is um, written in letters to her husband as she goes on this road trip west, as she tries to figure out what's next for her, in, you know, as an empty nester and um, as a wife and as a woman. And it's written in journal entries. And so, and I think it's something that we can all, I turned 50 this year. Um, so that's a big birthday. But I also think like in this time um, in history, when we're all homebound for right. most of us, and um, it just, it's a, an insight into um, what it means to rethink your life, yeah. um, take stock on what you do have and what you appreciate. We're just, you just talking about that before we yeah. record. Yes, yes. And it's beautifully written. It's really funny, um, but it's also emotional. So I think readers would just really get um, a lot out of this one right now. So it's called The Pull of the Moon by mm -hmm. Elizabeth Bird. Okay, great. And I think what we, we talked about, what we were going to do is we were just going to post some of this stuff on Heather's blog or my blog or somewhere where you can easily find it after this is over so you don't have to take notes we'll put it out there for you somewhere okay um so that sounds great as i also um turned uh, i'm about to turn 50 this this month oh. we were gonna have a big party <laughs> but we're actually not not having that party right now so i think that the only good solution would be to just turn 50 next year so that's how i'm gonna handle it we're gonna stay 49 for a little bit longer. I think so. I think you should stay 49 until you can have a party. That, that's fair. Okay, like great. Yeah. I'm glad we could get that taken care of. Yeah. All right, so now let's move on to a television show or movie. So um, I've been watching lately, and I actually just finished it up, and it was really good, was The Stranger. Oh, yeah. Netflix, I believe. And it is based on a book by Harlan Coben. Mm -hmm. And it is just absolutely riveting. So it is. The premise of it is um, it's a small, really beautiful town um, set in England. And um, these, these families, you, you get to meet this family. And um, they're at a, a, the man is at the Sun's soccer game. And a stranger comes up to him and just drops a bombshell on him. Yeah. And... Um, then we find that she kind of weaves her way through the community, dropping these bombshells on several different people. And you don't know if she's trying to help, if she's trying to hurt. And all the stories end up being connected. So it is a great binge watch. Uh, if, if you do have time just to sit all day and watch them all, guys, I guarantee you'll want to find out what happens next. And I, I heard there might be a second season. I don't know, but um, oh, I wonder. Yeah, I could, I could see. I actually, it's funny you mentioned because I just finished it last night. I had also read the book. I think it's a couple, a couple years ago now. I had also read the book, 
And um, I, I loved, I loved the series. I mean, I really thought they did an amazing job and the whole like sort of British, you know, sort of crime TV vibe was, you know, really added another layer to the story. I thought it was very, yeah. um, very compelling. Definitely, definitely a binge watch. I always like, well, I, I don't have access to a treadmill right now, but I use, <laughs> I do have access to the treadmill at my gym. A lot of times I, I'll just like sort of watch something on the treadmill and, uh, you know, on my iPhone, which is a terrible thing to do, but it's definitely like, you know, it's like a brain vacation for me. And, um, it's, uh, you know, a, a total treadmill binge. Like if I were, I'd be watching <laughs> I'd be watching that on the treadmill for sure, but it's a great one. You know what? You've walked an hour or more. Exactly. And, um, it's, exactly. and I'm just a huge fan of Harlan, like not just um, his work. I mean, I'm a huge fan of his just as a reader, but also as a person, he's just an amazing guy and so supportive and just a really, you know, just a real like sort of, I guess, writer's writer, you know, very like supportive of his friends and stuff. So um, I'm thrilled that, you know, The Stranger is like, it's, I think it's kind of like at the top of everybody's like binge watch right now, for sure. So good. So good. Yeah. Great. Well, you know, so we can take a lot of comfort in our, in these kinds of things, but nothing is more comforting than, <laughs> than food. Yeah. So what is your like sort of go-to, um, comfort recipe like what is the thing that you cook when you need to comfort yourself or when your family needs a little com comfort yeah I, you know I love to bake baking yeah. is one of my my favorite things and something that's really easy and that doesn't take too long um and it's my mom's recipe and you know here's my tattered oh I love that that's so cool and I check it out um it's you know right in one of my old cookbooks but it's apple cake and it oh. is simple as it sounds so right. there's like nine ingredients yeah. And so apples and flour and oil and eggs and uh, vanilla and a little bit of sugar and you throw it all in, stir it together. You don't even need, even need a mixer. Yeah. And you put it in a bundt cake pan, bake it for an hour, and it just comes out beautifully. And you can frost it if you want to. Usually I don't. I just right. put some whipped cream mm -hmm. um, on the side for it. And the best thing about it is you can have it for breakfast because it, uh, there's a lot of apples in it. Yes. So, I, I, so it's healthy. So it's like healthy enough to have for breakfast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's really good. So I'll, I'll be sure to share that recipe with you. Oh, but yeah. Please do. Um, everybody seems to like it. Uh, it. It's just really good. I think I was thinking that would be like a perfect recipe right now for my daughter because she's sort of, like, sort of suddenly like, you know, discovering cooking and she is you know really quite good cooking jeff and i cook a lot too so even though she hasn't really done that much cooking i think like she's picked up a lot through osmosis and then all of a sudden she's like ready to kind of be in the kitchen but that sounds like something that she would that oh, she yeah, would love yeah, to do sure. yeah. it, you know just um like i said like nine ingredients and uh, a little bit of chopping of that the apples and you throw it all together stir yep. it and she, yeah she can make that no problem. yeah i think she would enjoy that so do, is what kind of apples do you use so it, it can vary um i tend to use a, like a little bit of a mixture so i'll yeah. use it's like three cups of apples so i'll use one or two red apples and a green one so just to kind of mix it up and it's like just whatever like, kind of like whatever apple you have kind of thing exactly. yes that's, nice. that's good yeah. so, awesome yeah, really good. i might go make it later i think today. you should <laughs> but if you do make it definitely definitely take a picture and send it to me and um and then we'll share that we'll share that as well because it'll be i think it'll be a day or two before i figure out <laughs> how to get this where we're gonna put it um but i super um appreciate you spending this time with me and sharing these you know wonderful things um congratulations on your new book um this is how i lied coming may 1st and um you know talk this is definitely you know a binge read you know you'll definitely sit down with it and um not be able to get up until it's done so thank you so much for thank being you. with me heather thank you